Okay, so I just draw what I see. Sounds straightforward. What? Gestural curves. Okay, draw gestural curves. All right. I... Boxes and cylinders. Okay, so I draw boxes. What? Anatomy. Just do value studies. Just look at the light and... Can you guys please make up your mind about how I'm supposed to draw this? When you're practicing all of these skills, you're putting tools into your toolbox. And it's really important to have tools in the toolbox. You can't just, you have some wood, you can't just build a table from it with your bare hands. You need tools. But just having the tools in the toolbox isn't enough. You've also got to know how to pull out different tools at different parts of the process to create the thing you wanna create. And that is what we're gonna look at today in this video. We're gonna draw some poses and we're gonna look at what tools to use and when. So here you're gonna see me drawing this pose and I'm gonna break down what I'm doing at each stage. Now very often, I'm gonna pause right there. Very often, I start with the head. I don't necessarily think that's the best place to start. Maybe the rib cage is, but it's such a habit for me. Normally, I would recommend you draw that head in terms of like a sphere with a brow line on it. Start to build the forms, throw down a lump of clay, right? But in this case, rather than building up forms, I took a different tool out of the toolbox, which is the ability to see abstract 2D shapes, which is a really, really useful and important skill. And in this case, I thought, you know what? That head is creating a real simple 2D shape. I'm gonna throw that down first. Next, I'm probably going to, yeah, add the sternocleidomastoid, this muscle that comes from just behind the ear to the middle of the collarbones. The middle of the collarbones is the best landmark ever. It tells us about that connection to the head. So it's gonna help us connect the head to the torso. It's also gonna tell us where these collarbones start. It's gonna tell us about the shoulders and where they pivot from. And then it's gonna tell us where that sternum starts, which is gonna give us the rib cage. So it's like the, the best landmark for linking shoulders, rib cage, and head. Coming off, so that's this line right here, it comes down to that middle of the collarbones landmark, which is right there. Coming off the middle of the collarbones is the collarbones, obviously. This one is raised and there's a hand in the way, but because it's raised, I can imagine that that collarbone has pivoted up. And now you can see, I'm gonna to start to bring down this sternum line, and that's gonna give me that rib cage egg shape because all I need to do, we've got a whole tutorial about this, is double that and I know how far roughly the rib cage is gonna come down to and I'm gonna build up an egg shape and that egg shape's gonna run up to around the uh, top of the back of the neck and it's gonna fill the torso under the chest level, right? So once you get to the chest and above, uh, the shoulder structure starts to take over the outline but you can feel your rib cage like under your chest and so the rib cage is really filling things out down here. So let's see. Let's see if that's what I actually do. Yeah, so I put down the rib cage egg shape. So now I'm gonna try and figure out where that pelvis is. Now normally I would recommend that you draw that pelvis as a pair of pants, the pelvis pants. And the crucial thing would be that you push that across far enough to the side because if you straighten out the pose, which 80, if you put the pelvis here so it's more straight, you're gonna make the pose way less interesting and way less dynamic. 80 to 90% of people are gonna straighten that pose out. So if you shift it far enough across, you're ahead of the game. Now, I don't actually, don't, I don't think I draw the pelvis pants in this demo, but I am visualizing them, I promise. And you can see I've really pushed things across far. I've really got that outline on a diagonal there. Okay, so what I did was I built up this line right here and then this and this. When I wanna add on the legs, it's really tempting to kind of shift them too low down, right? As if they kind of start down here or something. And so I'm really gonna to wanna to think about where is the overlap, where is the point where that leg meets that curve that I've already drawn. Okay, so I've started to get a lot of the figure in with light marks. You can see I haven't got drawn into any details yet. I'm not like doing any of this. I'm trying to lay down the whole figure overall. Okay. When it came to those, the thigh and the leg, you can see that on this leg, 
I found that curve there, nice big S-shaped curve. If I can put down a single big gestural curve that's gonna capture a lot of what I'm seeing, that's a great starting point. For this leg, I, I could have perhaps done it in one curve like that, but I wanted to do it in two because that leg is bent and I wanted to get a difference between the two legs, right? One bent, one straight. When I'm looking at the thigh, I'm really trying to make sure my curves are asymmetrical and then I taper them down, right? The thigh gets narrower as it goes to the knee and then the leg's gonna get even narrower as it goes to the ankle as well. And that overall tapering is an idea that I wanna get in there. Not details, just big simple ideas like this. So we're 35 seconds in, we've established most of this pose. We haven't got drawn into any details, but we have pulled out a number of tools already. And this actually is what's gonna make or break the drawing as this first stage. So that's why I'm going on about it, right? We already pulled out the skill of seeing abstract 2D shapes. One of the most important and useful skills that you're gonna have. We have pulled out the skill of drawing with simple forms because we put down that rib cage egg shaped form another super useful skill, and we put down some gestural ideas. So we simplified the leg into a nice big flowing curve, for example. We made sure we shifted that pelvis far enough across because it's dynamic that way. We've also pulled out the skill of anatomy because we've picked out specific landmarks like the middle of the collarbones and the collarbones and stuff like that. So what's gonna happen next is we're gonna start to think about values. So already in the first 40 seconds, we've pretty much pulled out all the skills, right? But we've used them in different ways. And now I'm starting to build up the edge of this shadow. So what I mean right now is we have the lit area here, we have the dark area here, and then there's this boundary between the two. And it's specifically, I don't wanna get into shading, but it's the line along which that boundary runs that I'm interested in. Because that line, is gonna run across the forms, right? So a lot of people, especially when you're starting out, get real focused on like the outline, just trying to get exactly copy the outlines. But what's really, really useful and important is lines that tell us about the form. And one really lovely line that tells us about the form is the edge of the shadow because it kind of runs along the surface of all these forms. So that's one reason that it's really useful. A second reason is that it tells us about the light, like where is the light coming from? Where is it hitting and not hitting? And something really cool about the core shadow, which is this kind of where the light meets the dark, we're gonna have a little bit of a stronger shadow there. Cause you can see that once you get into the shadow, there's more bounce light getting in. And so often the strongest shadow is gonna be right there at the boundary point, And we can vary that, right? We can make it we can really design with it in a nice and fun way. Now, when I'm thinking about that shadow, I'm gonna close one eye, I'm gonna squint, and I'm gonna think about what's the big shape, where's that line running, what's the big shape of dark? But I'm also gonna use another skill in combination with that, which is my anatomy skills. So I'm thinking about how, okay, we're going along the pec here, but then we're gonna to transition to abs down here, so I wanna show that transition and you can see that that's what I've done so far. All right, so we're 40 seconds in, but a lot of the interesting stuff happens really early on. So later on, we're just gonna speed through it because it's gonna to get to the more, less, the less interesting stage. All right, so right there in that outline right here, can you see how I've really emphasized this? And the reason that I do that is because that is the rib cage jutting out. And then the midsection is stretching away to try and get to the pelvis. The squash and the stretch that's happening is super important. So I really wanna show like this is all squashed up and this is coming out at a strong angle. So things come down, then they come out at a strong angle here on the squash side. But then on the stretch side, I really wanna show how it's stretching out and I wanna make this drawing feel like a human being. And so if I can show that rib cage jutting out there, that's a really nice thing to bring out. So I'm not necessarily going to get caught up in all the details of the outline and every little bump and undulation of the outline, but that specific thing I did wanna bring out. So I'm feeling good, now I gotta add this hand. And hands are very complicated, there's a lot going on in hands. 
I don't pull out my anatomy skills here. What I pull out here is my abstract 2D shape skills. And in the early stages of a drawing with hands, that is normally the skill that I'm gonna pick out. So in other words, rather than worrying about fingers and doing this, I think about the basic shape that goes around this hand, like an abstract 2D shape. So rather than trying to do like this and this, and then suddenly I'm 10 minutes just focused on trying to get these fingers and it's really hard, I'm gonna throw down a shape. I'm gonna look at it, I'm gonna switch my eyes away from, I'm gonna become an alien who doesn't even know what a hand is and I'm just gonna try and see this, that shape right there and that's what I draw. It's actually a pretty similar thing for the rest of the arm, right? Because what I have here in this arm is like folded over and stuff like that. And I might use a little bit of like anatomical know-how to sort of see things with a bit more clarity, to see that this is bony, it's gonna be a bit sharper at the elbow, etc. But overall, I'm just gonna try and draw this kind of abstract 2D shape right there. And it's a skill that I pull out maybe more than any other is just to see the actual shape. But I'm often gonna combine it with a little bit of anatomical know-how in the background. Now, I actually put this elbow a little bit high, like a little bit long. When a limb is coming away from the rest of the torso, it's easy to make it too long because it's, it's like you don't see it related to the rest of the figure. So I often have to like pull things back in. Okay, so I'm gonna try and build up more of these edges of shadow. Now, what could easily happen here is I'm gonna make things too convoluted, too complicated, right? So what I'm talking about is this edge of this shadow and this, now, and also along the face here, right? Now, it's gonna be really easy for me to accidentally get like, okay, so it goes like this, and then it goes like this, and then just make it real like complicated and not nicely designed. So I know that I'm gonna be pulled towards that details direction and I'm gonna go, nope. I'm gonna cut through and I'm gonna try and make it nice and simple. Sometimes I have to take liberties with what I'm seeing to do that, but I want the shapes to be nicely designed. And I really like that little shape of light coming across his face but it only looks cool if it's a real simple shape. So here I'm using a rubber. Some people say don't use a rubber. I don't really see why. Uh, as long as you're not gonna try and overwork the drawing and get sucked into details, and you're just trying to make things even simpler or even better designs, then why not pull something back and rework it a little bit, make it better. Okay, so I'm pretty happy at this point with my shapes of light and dark. I'm a little bit nervous because around this arm, it could easily get too complicated. And I'm also aware that if I add lots of strong core shadow and contrast all over the drawing, it's not really gonna have a focal area. And I really like the shapes that I've got up here in the head and sort of upper torso area. So I'm gonna keep it a little bit more simple and relaxed uh, in the legs and in the arms. That's what I'm thinking at this point. So I decided to add a little bit of background color because I really like how that one side of the figure is lit. And if I add a little bit of darker value behind that lit side, it's gonna make the light feel even lighter, right? Light only feels light because it's next to dark. So if I put dark next to that lit side of the figure, it's gonna make it feel more lit up. Now I'm starting to put down some shadow shapes like on that thigh. So let me talk about that a little bit. Along the thigh, there's a muscle that runs down from that aces point down to the inside of the knee along here. And it kind of separates the thigh into two forms. So there's one for the quads and one for the inner thigh. And we'll do a video on that at some point. But the point is that I've noticed a shadow shape because of that, that kind of looks something like this, a little bit of a zigzag. But you'll notice that even though when I, on the reference, the contrast between the dark and the light is very strong, I've made that, con I've made that core shadow uh, very gentle, like on the drawing. 
It's nowhere near as strong as the core shadow that I used up at the chest or on the face. And that is because it's not my focal point. It's not the thing that I want to bring attention to. And I'm the artist, so I can decide where I want the contrast to be, right? I'm not a slave to the reference. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about this. And it's <laughs> I have the strong potential of ruining it by adding stuff and detracting from what I already have. So that's a lot of what's in my mind is don't ruin this. There's nothing wrong with messing it up or whatever, right? It's just a, it's just a sketch. Um, but this is a point where I know that I'm in, I'm in danger of overworking it and ruining it. So you can see that there wasn't that much to say after we got past the first minute. We got four minutes left to go, but the drawing is mostly done here and I'm just gonna speed through it because I'm pretty much just gonna spend four minutes just noodling about with it, um, just adjusting core shadows and, and stuff like that. So um, here's the final drawing. I really enjoyed it, it's super fun. And you can see how I pulled out different skills for different parts of the drawing. I really recommend joining our study group. So in our study group, we take one skill or one anatomical area a month, and we go in depth on it with four exercises. We work on it all together. It's a really, really lovely group of people. And the progress that's being made in there is super uh, inspiring. And so if you want more access to me to look over your drawings and ask questions and you want to structure your practice in a really powerful way with really good exercises, check out the study group below. All right, there should be another video up on the screen. Check it out and I'll see you over there.